first module in week 15. This module mainly focuses on the evidentiary value of email SMS and cyber crime and offences dealt with IPC. Let's focus on the evidentiary value of email and SMS. Earlier days, people used paper documents for message communication, information exchange, data storage and retrieval. But today, due to the advancement in digital technology, paper documents have totally, they are vanished and they have been slowly replaced by electronic documents. Electronic documents can be stored, retrieved and accessed very easily and quickly than the older paper documents anytime, anywhere and in any form. They are stored in large repositories using more advanced and enhanced technologies. The problem actually comes with the document's trustworthiness or authentication during its transmission. The originality of the document has to be preserved. The electronic documents basically are classified into two types of values, namely the primary value and the secondary value. Primary value holds values about the creator who uses the record for legal, administrative or for business purposes. The secondary value holds the values about persons or entities that include both public and private users but excludes the values about the creator. Of course, the next one is the research and historical values. They are also included under the secondary values but once again, they are classified into two types as the evidentiary values and information values. This chapter basically focuses on the evidentiary values because this is very very important to the court proceedings as far as the cyber crimes are concerned. Let us look at the evidentiary value. Evidentiary value is the quality of the record that provides a legal proof, historical proof, authentic evidence and adequate evidence about the origin of the record, the creator of the record, the creation of the record from different perspectives and finally the history of events and topics associated with the record such as the activities, functions, policies, operations, etc. In order to provide evidentiary values to electronic documents, following requirements are to be satisfied. There are five such requirements. They are requirements during creation, requirements during storage and retrieval, requirements during modification, requirements during migration and finally requirements during disposal. Requirements during creation. These are all information to be stored as an evidentiary value during the creation of a document. For example, information about the originator, name, affiliation of the originator, the compose time, etc. Information about the creator, once again name, affiliation of the creator. Information about creation, for example, the time of creation, the software used for creation, the source of the record, reason and the purpose for creation of records, etc. Next comes the requirement using storage and retrieval. As modification of a document is a major concern in the electronic uh, medium as well as in evidentiary value, the storage and retrieval process, they do not reduce the trustworthiness of the documents. Requirements during modification. This includes Information about the modifier, for example, the name and affiliation of the modifier. Information about modification, for example, time of modification, list of originals, list and source of modifications and reason and purpose of modification. Next comes the requirements during migration. 
information about migration executor for example the name and affiliation of the person who carries a migration information about verifier the name and affiliation of the verifier next information about migration and verification that is the time of migration and verification software used reason and the purpose for migration and verification finally the requirements during disposal the information about disposal executor the name and the affiliation of disposal executor information about disposal that is the time reason and the purpose of disposal these are all very very important as far as electronic documents are concerned this of course this section discusses the evidentiary values of email and how email can be considered as an evidence based on the jurisdiction and laws all of us know email stands for electronic mail we are using it today to exchange information among various users through telecommunication and we know it has two parts the header and the body the header consists of the sender's name receiver's name address recipient's uh, user name address and the subject of the message whereas the body consists of typed text messages sometimes attached files etc which can be in any form like picture audio video etc from the sender as email is a kind of electronic document nowadays it's being used as evidence in courts the indian evidence act 1872 information technology act 2000 and information technology amendment act 2008 they have led the path of admissibility of electronic documents as evidence let us look one after the other according to this act the term evidence stands for statements that are permitted by courts or something that is to be provided as witness in relation to matters of fact under inquiry such statements are called as oral evidence according to section 3 of indian evidence act 1872 the term evidence stands for all paper and electronic documents and records that are produced in the court for inspection and they are called as documentary evidence of course we dealt very elaborately with various sections specifically section 65a and 65b of indian evidence act briefly discussed the evidentiary values of electronic records for any electronic document to be admissible in courts as evidence certain conditions must be satisfied the document can be of paper printed form or it can be stored in electronic media like optical magnetic disc sometimes flash drives computers etc hard disk etc there are four conditions that are required to be satisfied first computer that holds evidentiary document should be used regularly by the person for storing or processing information and activities one who produces evidence in the computer should have a lawful access to that computer second storing or processing of documents should be regularly fed into the computer third during storing or processing of documents the computer must have to work properly in case of faults in computers during processing it is to be proved that faults in computers did not affect the electronic documents or accuracy of the data present in it finally or the fourth the data in the document should be a reproducible or derived one from the data that is fed into the computer section 65 of information act allows secondary evidence for the original document if in case the original document cannot be produced or it cannot be easily movable to court same way section 65b also requires a certificate that must be produced by the responsible person positioned 
in managing the computer and its operations. Section 63 describes this secondary evidence and how it can be produced. Once again, according to section 85b, electronic records have to be digitally signed as per section 14 of Information Technology Act 2000 when they are produced. Additionally, section 45 depends on expert advice in acceptability of electronic records. Thank you.